Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you had a beautiful weekend. Enjoyed being in church yesterday. And if you were not able to worship with us, please visit our website and watch one of the live streams from, from yesterday. Today in our Bible reading plan for our devotion, whether you're listening to the podcast or watching the video, we are in Luke chapter 20. So hopefully you've read this chapter and written in your journal what God spoke to you and how you're going to respond to him. But I want to encourage you while you're opening your Bible there, if you haven't already, uh, to be praying for this coming Sunday, which is Easter, for, for the services to, to honor Jesus and for people to be saved. Pray for someone to be saved in each of our three services and, and pray that God uh, gives you an opportunity today, tomorrow, this week to invite people to worship on Easter Sunday and that he gives you the, the eyes to see them and the courage to speak, pray for the opportunity, and then seize the moment when it comes and invite people to come with you this Sunday to worship Jesus on Easter. Um, in, in chapter 20 of Luke, we have the what's called the parable of the vine growers, the owner who uh, subleased or whatever you want to call it, his vineyard and people worked it and then he would send his servants to collect as payment, you could say, part of the produce, part of the crop. And and in this parable, they abused and, and mistreated his servants and finally he, he sent his son and, and they killed his son <clears throat> thinking that since he would not have an heir to receive the vineyard, it would become theirs and and archaeologists have discovered in, in records uh, from, from 2,000 years ago in, in the Middle East uh, situations very similar to this, uh, these, these kind of contracts, these kind of agreements, and, and actually, <coughs> excuse me, uh, disputes uh, that are similar to what is in, in, in this parable. So Jesus is telling a parable that they would understand because it came from everyday life in their culture and their in their era, so it would make sense to to them. And what he what he's teaching in this parable is the way the the Jewish nation, the the leaders of the Jewish nation and Jewish faith, often treated God and His representatives. So the servants that the master would send to the vineyard is God sending His prophets. And, and, and Jesus is saying that your forefathers often would not listen to the prophets, would mistreat the prophets, even at times killed the prophets, and prisoned the prophets, beat the prophets, and they did that. You read the Old, Old Testament, they did that. And then finally, the owner of the vineyard sent his son, and they killed the son. Well, Jesus is saying, God has sent me, his son, uh, to you, the vineyard, Israel, and, and you're going to, that's what you're going to do to me. You're going to kill me. And the leaders understood Jesus was speaking this parable about them. If you look at, uh, at uh, verse 19, um, the scribes and the chief priests tried to lay, no, let's see, uh, well, they were wanting to kill him. Uh, in verse 19, they, lay, they tried to lay their hands on him that very hour, and they feared the people. But notice here at the end of verse 19, for they understood that he spoke this parable against them, referring back to verses 9 to 18, the parable of the vineyard and the, the vine growers and so on. Um, they understood what he was saying. Mark tells us the same same thing. But they um, they disagree with Jesus. They said, Lord, that's, they were saying, Jesus, no, we're not like that. If you look back at verse uh, 16, when he finished the parable, uh, at the end of it, when they heard it, they said, may it never be. No, 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 no. Our forefathers didn't do that. We're not doing it. They were in denial. And then to sort of to, to drive his point home, Jesus quotes Psalm 118, Psalm 118, uh, and also uh, uh, some allusions from the book of Isaiah in verses 17 and 18, when, when it says Jesus looked at them and said, what then is this that is written? And now he's going to quote Psalm 118, verse 22. The stone which the builders rejected, this became the chief cornerstone. Then verse 18. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, but on whomever it falls, it will scatter him like dust. The chief cornerstone was a larger stone in ancient architecture that was often at the corner of a, of a building 
wall going one way, another wall going in the other direction, and it would bear the weight of those walls coming together. It was the cornerstone. And, and the, the, the scripture teaches Jesus is the, is the chief cornerstone. Now, when he says that those who fall on it will be broken into pieces, and then whomever it falls on will be crushed and scattered like dust, the, the first part, there's different interpretations that whoever falls on it will be broken. Some say what he's meaning is that people who trip and fall on Jesus are broken. Uh, you know, so like if you fall on a rock, you might break an arm or a leg or what, or your head or whatever. So if you trip over who Jesus is, you trip and fall on who Jesus is, you'll be broken. It damages you. You'll, you'll be spiritually ruined. There's another interpretation that says if you humble yourself and lay down on that stone, humble yourself and lay down on it, down, you'll be broken of your pride. And uh, I'm not sure which one is true. I bounce back and forth between those two interpretations. But the last part of that is, is very clear. <laughs> Whoever the stone falls on will be crushed. That that if you deny Jesus and it's, and it's the image of that stone falls on you, if a stone falls on you, you're smashed, okay? And, and, and it's the picture that if you fall, uh, because you don't believe and repent and, and you're going to be crushed at the judgment. So that, that's the idea is that, that Jesus is the chief cornerstone. And you, if you build your life on him, there, you'll be stable in support. But if you don't build your life on him, you're going to be, you're going to be uh, uh, crushed. And, and so it's still, it's still that way today. Some people trip over Jesus. That's the reason I tend to lean toward the, both parts being people who don't believe. Some trip over him and others get crushed by him. Uh, the end result's the same. Uh, Jesus is the chief cornerstone that, that, that brings stability and salvation to life. But he's also the stone that some people, you know, uh, just, just can't lean on. Some people reject. Some people don't believe. And they're going to be broken and they're going to be crushed uh, because of it. And, and, you and I cannot determine how someone responds. That they, they are free to respond as they choose to respond. But the, the choice they make in terms of their personal response, Jesus is going to hold them up and save them, or they're going to be crushed under the judgment that comes when you reject Jesus Christ. And, uh, and so Jesus was speaking this parable to the Jewish people and the Jewish nation, and the Jewish nation was crushed by the Romans because they rejected Christ. But it's applicable to us today. He is the chief cornerstone. Peter talks about that. Other parts of the Bible talk about that. And either he becomes the cornerstone in whom you build your life, or he becomes the cornerstone that will eventually fall on you and crush you at the judgment day. That's just, that's just how it is. And I pray you are building your life on Jesus as the cornerstone. Today in architecture, think of it as the foundation of your house. If you don't have a foundation, the house will crumble. But if Jesus is your foundation, you're going to be okay. That's the message today. I'll see you tomorrow as we have a brief devotion from chapter 21. God bless you, everybody.